What's up, fellas? In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a new high emissivity refractory coating compound formula. This stuff performed amazing. I've got a new aggregate that I've added to it. And as you can see, it's performing quite well on red hot metal. This stuff is not flaking off as we're using it. It's looking really good. This is some of the highest performing paint that I've made yet. This stuff is so durable. You can see here on the top of the furnace that it's also doing very well. So we're going to be taking a look at this new high emissivity refractory coating that I've developed. And I haven't honed in on the perfect composition just yet. We're still putting our feelers out there to see where we want to start testing. This stuff is extremely durable. I'm pushing on this very hard and it has a taffy-like melted glass consistency when it's on the metal. You can see here that it's definitely shining brighter on one side versus the other there. Not so much on the back, but on the front, you can see we're shining a little brighter on the high emissivity coating. If my camera would just chill out. Here's a couple of close-ups of that boundary. And as you can see, this stuff is not flaking off at all. And I let that burner run for like a half an hour. So durability test passed. Let's check this stuff out and see what we got. Okay, I'm not doing anything quantitative today. I'm just doing an intuitive test. Got about that much zirconium oxide with about a big fat spoonful of aluminum oxide mixed in with that. We're gonna add some play sand. Actually, you know what? I ought to do the blasting media. Hmm. All right, I've got some blasting media here, the black stuff. I'm going to add a fair amount, the amount that I think that we're going to need to fill in them voids. I think that's probably good. We just need some every once in a while. Now we're going to add some very hot, dirty potassium silicate. It's a pretty thick solution. Now, as far as the proportion of that goes, I'm just going to add it until it becomes a thick slurry or a very thick paint. I add a little bit in here to start. That's probably a little much, maybe. Another reason this stuff isn't as white as the other batches is that because we use a very dirty potassium silicate solution that was harvested from used silica gel beads. So this is a gray color here. So potassium silicate is also a CO2 cured material where over time it hardens from exposure to CO2 in the air. Right here's a quick example of that. You see how that's turning white? That is the CO2 cured portion of this material and the rest is just a big chunk of potassium silicate that I made. Here's that drill bit and this stuff is on there very good. It's starting to come off a little bit right there. I am really rubbing this you guys. I'm trying to rub it off of there. And it's rubbing stainless steel off onto most of the material. So as far as durability goes, so it did rub off on an area where there was completely smooth paint. It didn't right there though. And I promise you guys, I'm not stunting here. I rubbed this hard enough to try to make it come off there. I really need to know this stuff for myself. Is this a good formula? This is an amazing formula. So the longer you let it set, the better. Coming at you. It paints really well. And as I said, I've made a couple of compositions that did not wet metal. They would beat up like a duck's back. You know, it's pretty ugly. I hope it performs amazing. All right, fellas, we're back. Today, we're gonna to do some testing on power output also. This gray stuff is the new coating. 
and it is extremely durable. This is potassium silicate, but I boiled a lot more of the water out of it and I used a different um, aggregate this time. The inside is the old coating. We haven't tried this new stuff on the inside yet. I feel like this stuff's gonna be better, but my Flare One camera broke, so I won't be able to do an emissivity test just yet. Now we're plotting this test on the graph to get a higher order interpretation of exactly what it is that's going on and how to get the furnace to its maximum temperature. And some pretty interesting things happen. This is about 15 minutes in, but let's take a look at the, this plotted on the graph. At about 24 minutes in, um, I turned the fuel rate down, okay? Because the temperature was kind of stagnating. Now when I turned the fuel rate down, the temperature went up. It got up to about um, 2,742 degrees at about this point here where I turned the fuel rate back up again. And when I did that, it caused the temperature to drop. The second I turned the fuel back down, the temperature went back up again. <clears throat> so more energy is not always better. This line represents the kilowatt output. We went from 111 kilowatts down to 93 kilowatts and we kind of stepped up and stepped down just to do a bump test to see if that in fact was going to give us that much difference in temperature because i had a feeling that anything over eight inches of fire coming out of the top and you're getting colder i wanted to use this opportunity to show you guys how much draft this burner induces on its own through the venturi action or Bernini's principle as it is people hate it when I say Ventura they get mad at me but <laughs> it's just kind of the way I've always pronounced it anyway um, take a look at that coating man this stuff is glowing red hot it's not blistering off it stays on there the whole time it actually gets glassy and one of the reasons why it comes off sometimes during the cool down is uh, from sugaring from the metal itself. It's not that it comes off, it's that uh, there's a, a sugar layer of chromium oxide forms underneath the layer. I would imagine it's not airtight, you know, especially not at these temperatures. Here's what it looks like without the coating. You guys are probably getting sick of seeing this comparison, but just wanted to show you the significant glow. So here's a look at that coating on the top. It's performing amazing. It's not blasting off of there very rugged coating it's um almost like a, a grip tape because of that blasting media is very sharp we did take a lot of temperature readings to plot that graph and unfortunately today i did not get up to the 2900 degrees i don't know what's going on yet i got to get to the bottom of it we may have some carbon buildup in our preheat tube which is right there on the top there sometimes if you don't use an air dryer Man, look at that coating performing on that, that air cowling there. That's the Ventura cowling that helps pull air. That's why the shape of this burner is so good. It leaves those air voids in there. So look at that. No spalling or nothing. This is an actual like consumer grade material here. I'm loving this. So. We shut her down, got some temperature readings. You can tell by the color there that that thing was hitting every bit of 2,500 Fahrenheit no matter what. Now, the footage of the after is damaged. It won't play. So here's some pictures. That black stuff is some of the throat nozzle that dripped out. We used a metal piece of form for the lid and it dripped down. And that's that iron oxide mixture. There's the lid, as you can see, some of that iron oxide bled through, but for the most part, things were As we see here, this new composition held up extraordinary on the top. Okay, so I had a dead battery in that test. Unfortunately, I think I need to paint the walls again and try it one more time. I hate to say it. Having a dead battery ain't, ain't a very good idea. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Amen. Psalm 51, verse 10. 
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Let's do two more. First Samuel, verse 16, uh, chapter 16, verse 7. 